Hello, welcome to Putting Work TV. We've enjoyed watching your journey and growth as an artist slash creator in the New England scene, and we really want to hear your story. Our focus, man, is just allowing our guests to tell their stories front and center without judgment or opinion from anybody. Tell them how I like it, straight like that. Let's dive in. How did it all begin? Valid. Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Nico Valid, and we rocking with Putting Work TV. Shout out Putting Work TV. Shout out for real. No, for sure, appreciate the shout out. Let's get into it. So, how did it all begin, man? Man, I gotta say, my love for hip hop and like the culture was born around the same time that my personality was born. So, like, you know, like that that moment your alter that ego hit you. It meshed. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they loving him right now. Yeah. Don't worry about the noise. He till he locked in. Feel me? Um, yeah, it's my campaign right now. Feel me? Like I already won no key, but hey, let's stay on top of it though. Check me out. Mm-hmm. Um, so my love, like, like I'm sure everybody like overlooks that moment where you develop a personality. Like you see little kids, they don't have a personality. They just like, but as they grow, like. You know, even with with, with broke cash daughter, my goddaughter Ezzy, like, you know, at first she was just a baby, like a beautiful baby that like didn't really have no personality, no nothing. But now she's all like interactive and active, and her facial features kick in, right? But then there's that time where your personality traits kick in, right? Like your likes, your dislikes, where you actually start to articulate who you are. You know, like you categorize. You categorize as a human being, and that shit like. Hits you maybe around like eight, nine years old, maybe. Yeah. So, my love for hip hop, like, it came around, like, I was freestyling on the bus. Um, shout out my uncle, my uncle E, my uncle Emilio. He, um, he really put me on to like 50 Cent early. He listened to that a lot while I was, you know. What was your favorite 50 song? Learning how to walk, learning how to talk, honestly. My favorite song used to be Go Shawty. <laughs> right, right, right. But that was because, you know, I was I was young. I say like right now my favorite like my favorite fifty cent record of all time is either like Twenty One Questions with Nate Dog or like Valid Choice. You know what I'm saying? Just like your name. Or like just just so much like even the G Unit era, you know what I'm saying? Like Most there's just so many like lovely records, you know, many men. Um like shout out fifty, but I also grew up listening to a lot of fab, um, and you know, being how my family from the islands, like you know, my my parents are from DR, but um, like I grew up listening to a lot of like Spanish music and stuff, um, and I'm also like you know very well versed in my history, my roots. So, like most definitely, I, I you know I uh, I claim strong to my Haitian heritage. Because if you didn't know, like, Dominicans have only been Dominicans since, like, 1844 onwards. Eight, like, in 1843, you know. But, That's a fact. You know, like, so, you know, I just know the truth about certain shit. So, like, I might speak Spanish, but I'm still a Zoe. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how I feel about it. And, like, I wouldn't let nobody tell me otherwise because I know my history. I've told, you know, people with, like, by nationality, Haitian parents about their roots and I've put them on to shit and you know my Creole's I you know I'm like you know mm. what I'm saying but um let's just say I'm proud of my entire island I'm not proud of any particular part of my island and it's important to have that conversation because I'm a hip-hop artist like fuck do I look like picking and choosing when I want to be black you know what I'm saying so, mm. You're not making that discrimination or that separation. You know, and a, that lot ties of, it. a lot of that colorism happens on, on the island a lot. You know what I'm saying? Jamaica is not free from that. Um, you know, Haiti itself is not free from that. But, you know, this isn't a political interview. So, yeah. um, talking you know, of, talking about that, um, where, like, what was it like growing up where you were from? Right, because I see you have you have strong value in your heritage and you respect your lineage, and that's good to see because a lot of people shy away from that, you know, when they find out what nationality they are and they don't want to let go of stigmas. So, what was it like growing up from like where you're from? Like, how did your environment impact growing your personality? Well, I feel like growing up in a mainly like Dominican household, a Christian Dominican household, very conservative, very strict, but like. Being born in America, 
because I'm from Worcester, Mass. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to who. Um, I really, I could, I could, you know, adhere, comply to my household rules and shit like that. But like, when it came to who I wanted to be and the life I wanted to lead, like, you know, I grew up here in America, so by all rights and purposes, like I'm Afro, you know, like like I'm Afrocentric and I'm living in America, like I'm black, you know what I mean? Like I speak a little Spanish, like I speak fluent Spanish, you know, I speak fluent English because I grew up in a household that was bilingual. Um, you know, shout out my brother Cash because, you know, uh, uh, in my later years, like around the time I was in high school and stuff like that, a little after high school, you know, I was, uh, I had moved out and, um, you know, shit didn't really fall through with uh, my apartment situation and eventually things fell uh, fell apart and shit like that. Just the pitfalls of life. You know, pitfalls, you know. You know, shout out my master, you know, my bro Cash's mother. She took me in just, you know, just as one of her children, you know what I'm saying? So it so, didn't have to be blood-related, it was love. Nah, it was all love, bro. And, like, you know, like a strong Haitian family that didn't really owe me nothing other than the fact that, like, Cash was just my bro for many years, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, I was adopted into that family, you know, like, like his grandma. I'm, I'm another grandchild to his, his aunts, his uncles, you know, I'm another nephew. Like That's an amazing I'm, story. I'm missing at the family functions. When I'm not there, I hear it from everybody, you know, the next time they see me and shit like that. So it's not like I grew up with an adoptive family and I don't fuck with my biological family. I'm proud of my whole heritage, you get what I'm saying? Like, my family's strongly black. We have roots in Haiti, but, like, nobody really acknowledged it on my side other than me because I had that unique experience of being born in America, having access to the education to know about my roots. You lied to a lot on the islands. It's not exactly the island people's fault, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they get brainwashed. They get brainwashed as fuck. So... How does your music alter your life? You know, the same way when the natives or the music people saved from my life, man. It, it saved your life. Yeah. Explain that. Um, I don't. I school was boring, mundane. I could. I know so many fun facts about so much shit, and I could. I could learn material and reproduce what I learned and shit like that. But eventually, like. It just fried my brain out. I'm not good at that. Like, you know, like, my brother Cash, he's really good at just mastering the skill by just watching it. That nigga got the shining gun, for real. You mm. know what I'm saying? For those who watch anime, my love for hip-hop and my love for anime, they go hand in hand. Mm. Both of those things really, like, played a big role in my life growing up in a, you know, in, in a city where a lot of shit happens. You know what I'm saying? No matter where I go. Shit always follow, cause I lived in Worcester, I've lived in Boston, you know what I'm saying. Um, and it's not that shit follow me, it's that. Unfortunately, when you growing up in all of these cities and you know urban like, it's the same tale in all the ghettos across America, you know. Like you could be a good kid in a mad city, and still lose your life. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Kendrick. Um, shout out Nip Hustle, like, you know, rest in peace. Most death. That's, uh, you know, I ain't come with my Crenshaw hoodie, but I should've. Um, I gotta say, like, if I was to give you, like, a rapid top five, Nip Hustle would be on that list. Um, but how does, how, pass away. so uh, music impacted your life because it saved your life. Mm -hmm. So, that's gonna segue into my, what can people ex expect from Valid? Like, what does your discography look like? In terms of, you know what, I need to listen to some valid. I need to feel this way. You know, um, I've since <clears throat> I've been making music since like eight or nine years old. But like, I only started uploading shit when SoundCloud became a thing. When SoundCloud became a thing, I was like a freshman, a sophomore in high school. That was like twenty fifteen. You know, years ago, around twenty fifteen, right? That's when I started dropping like little home studio mixes and shit like that. And, you know, shout out my boy Austin because we was recording all of that out of his basement. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Austin Tuttle. Um, motherfucking. But eventually, as I grew, I started to grow less comfortable with the work that I was putting out because 
ever since I started rapping, ain't nobody told me I was bad at it. So that gave me so much validation and confirmed, like... A lot of confidence, like, too. Yeah, like, I grew up, I grew up, like, you know, I'm sure y'all seen my Bad for the Community in, uh, podcast. Like, I grew up a fat kid with chipped teeth and, like, not much self-esteem, you know what I'm saying? So when I found out I was good at rapping... It helped me build a character. I started, like, you know, I started losing weight. I started letting my hair grow out. Eventually, you know, my you know, my teeth uh, uh, ended up getting fixed. I got my gap, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, like... All clean now. You know, like, <laughs> you know shout out all my zones with a gap, you know? Shout hey, out I got, hey, I got a gap, face. too. I feel the life, man. It be like that, um... I feel like I feel like you shouldn't get rid of it because it's the same thing that makes you you. Shout out J. Cole. He's a very big inspiration, the whole Crooked Smile movement, you know what I'm saying? Um, definitely a strong message to those people who, uh, you know, they uh, glamorize or they stigmatize their physical appearance too much, you know what I'm saying? Most deaf. You So you mentioned J. Cole's message to the people by saying Crooked Smile. What is your message to the people? What do you try to give your audience? What do you provide? So... I'd like to let people know that I'm just like me, like I'm valid, I'm I'm authentic. Like some of my views may be some shit that most people uh, like haven't heard before. And maybe I'm putting them onto some uncomfortable shit, but because I'm valid, I'm gonna have that conversation regardless. I'm gonna address the elephant in the room because there's a saying that goes, anybody who's too afraid to address the elephant in the room, is basically condemned to bear the weight of it for as long as they're quiet about it. You know what I'm mm. saying? If some shit bothers you and you don't speak up, that's not gangster. You gotta be able to pick your battles, of course. There's some shit you just gonna have to... You just gonna have to, You just gonna have to smoke that cigarette, smoke that short, like my like my bro Reese said, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Reason B. Smoke that short, he said? Smoke that short, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, he... You know, he grew up in Florida, so that's where, like, you know, I always go, uh, growing up, I always heard him, like, talking about... Context, G- context. G- G- I got you, you I got you, so I got you. I be using that gotta put on for the jit shit. Got you. you know, shout out my bro. Lee. Gotta put on for the jit. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a definitely, that's, man, that's such a groovy line right there. You have a way of using your music in a way that makes it seem playful and fun. And sometimes that's all people need because, you know, you could be a G. You could be a, a very... Um, respectable person you don't want people to play with your boundaries but when it comes to music you have to be fluid you know because if you're rigid they'll punish you for it you it could have been the very thing that got you hot but the very thing that got you hot is is also the thing that brings you down because you won't change you refuse to change you don't even want to learn anything outside of what you have and here's the thing i've been because i've been making music like at eight or nine I was just freestyling, playing in the back of the bus, you know what I'm saying, just fucking around. But by the time I was 14, I had already had notebooks written. By the time I was 11, I already had, like, my first, like, two, three notebooks full of lyrics. Like, you know, like, I'm talking, like, I was li- I was into Nas, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne was the first person to, like, inspire me to pick up. His lyricism is godly. Like, and here's the thing. As a as a youth, Lil Wayne just made it seem so easy to rap, you know. Because I mean? you thought it was that easy. Because because uh, older heads that like I grew up with and I conversed with, you know, in in, in hip hop culture and people, a lot of people feel like they don't give Wayne his flowers. I'm like, fuck you talking about. I'm nice at rapping, and just because my taste later evolved, that doesn't mean that Wayne wasn't the person to. You know, because I grew up listening to 50 and all that, but them niggas didn't make me want to rap. Them niggas just made me want to break dance and b-boy and... and, and um, just and, be and, cool. And work out, too. Like, you know, I was a fat kid, and seeing 50 Cent all ripped on the Get Rich or Die Trying and shit like that, that shit was very, like, motivational, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, and my uncle Emilio, he, he, he was always in shape, hooping and shit, so he was always working out, lifting weights, playing basketball. Like, you know, that's, like, that's my, that's my hero, like, personally. You know what I'm saying? My Uncle E. Um, Shout out to him. For real, for real. Uh, he, he doing great. 
I want to ask you, what is your process of creating and what did you learn the most from it? How do you get into the zone? Like you have some players who talk about sports and when they get in the zone, they can't even remember what they did. They just remember everything that happened, happened exactly as they reacted to the situation and it responded well for them. That's me because I've been doing this so long that I try not to grow rigid. When you've been doing something for a long time, you do in fact grow rigid. I try not to sound... Like any, uh, like when I first started rapping, I always like tried to sound like the rappers I was trying to, like the rappers that I listened to. So like I had a problem in my music where like my bars were off the fucking chain, my flow was off the chain, but the swagger and the cadences they still sounded like regurgitated, like everything that I was listening to, and I listened to everything from Eric B and Rakim to Young Thug. So. Like, when you can take, like, boom bap, you know, southern trap, um, you know, like, even your most recent shit with drill music, like, like and, and, what Flo- and what Florida got going on with Kodak Black, you know, shout out Yak, for real. Um, all of that. You're able like, to identify it as I felt difference. like I was a culmination of everybody who I was listening to. I, I, I started rapping in... Literally the year, like a few years before Lil Wayne introduced the world to Drake. You get what I'm trying to say? Wow. So like... Right in that time period. Must have right been crazy. Right in that time period. You know, we, I, I got to witness the Celtics in 08 with the big three. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to witness a lot of cool shit. Tsunami. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to witness a lot of... Real cool world shit. events. Because I was born in 98, so I grew up in the early 2000s. You know what I'm saying? So 08... You know, that was great because that's like the year I first started like trying to freestyle. That's funny. My brother was born in 98 too. And he get, he's 24 years more of the experience. Like he knows, he understands. So, you know, the person who actually had me like more like in a routine on how to have a creative process is my older brother Cash because even though he like, you know, uh, uh, I've been making music for like a very long time. He told me like, yo, bro, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this shit because he picked it up you know, a few years later, he he more like a late bloomer, you know what I'm saying? But his discipline, because he's an athlete, I was unathletic, I was kind of lazy. So I had, it was untapped potential versus routine and structure. Mm. And that, I saw his growth. Just that allowed like him to level up. Level but, up. But notice what you just said. You just identified both of your learning processes, but it was different. One is a negative word, right? And one is discipline. But either way, you're sacrificing both. You're sacrificing the untapped potential and you're sacrificing having to do what you want to do for a later result. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you were able to identify is the same way you had to make yourself realize you were a culmination of all your artists and that it wasn't really your original sound. You know what I'm saying? So like, that takes that's, that takes some awareness. And, and I want to ask... my engineer, Vince, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, my engineer, V, he he also, like, he don't sugarcoat when it comes to that shit. So I've been in rooms with my brother and my engineer. And, like, this is my family. But at the same time, I've been in rooms with these niggas where they literally, like, I'm, I'm a kid who's been rapping for so long, more than 10 years. And they've made me feel like... I've been doing the wrong kind of practice every From time. My whole time. From mm. my whole time. From my whole time. Even if I could outrap older niggas. Even if I could outrap every nigga. Everybody, like, constantly tells me, like, yo, bro, you you the one, you the one, you the chosen one. Like, you inspire me to rap. Every time I'm rapping, I'm in the booth and I'm rapping my hardest. I'm trying to, like, I'm, I'm trying to channel my valley, you know what I'm saying? And hearing that from niggas who are actively putting out music regularly without, like, me dropping any names or saying like that, like... Even people who aren't in my in my camp. Just people who and show love to you. Breach mob, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just people who people, show love to you. People who show love to me, uh, recognizing that ever since I was young, I was the kid to check in with, like, yo, proof of this, how to sound before I drop it, you know, all of that. Like, it made me feel like some sort of whiz kid, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because they respected your mind for music because even, you had bro, to get through it. Even the niggas who wanted to fucking jump me or rob me or set me up would double back and try to, like, learn how to make music with niggas eventually. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, like, I think that my love for what I did overpowered so much. All the hate. Around yeah. Me. You get what I'm trying to say? And that all was into, Repeat like, that. Your love for what... So, go in depth with that. My love for what I do. Like, music saved my life, right? If it wasn't for music, everything would be so mundane for me that, like, 
I wouldn't accomplish anything. I would just like be like content all the time. There's no like if with music, I could go from selling out stadiums, winning Grammys, acting like that really like opened like the the sides of life that you could do even if you weren't an artist. You new go, perspectives. New perspectives. Like music made me feel like that was my outlet to do anything in this earth. You know what I'm saying? So that was what motivated you the most. And so what do you wish you would have known before you started? Like somebody was like, yo, valid, pull up, bro. Let what? me tell you, get into the studio, it's gonna be tough. It's like a job. You gotta get in there every day. Just what are the things you would you wish you would have known before you started? Somebody should have gave you the program and they didn't. And what are the things you know now that back then you wish, damn, I knew that? The environment I grew up with promoted a lot of crime and, and promoted a lot of hustling and, and whether the shit was legal or illegal didn't matter, right? But the thing is, growing up Caribbean, you got your ass fucking whooped. Unless your parents was like that, you wasn't allowed to be like that. And sometimes your parents uh, are either like that and they have, like, gang history, drug history, just like a criminal record. Or they won't accept it. Or they won't accept it. And I was blessed with very, like, like two saints for parents, you know? Like, they're not perfect people. But at the same time, they played it safe their whole life. But that also made me, like, realize and very, like, aware that I needed to be more ambitious than that, even if it meant getting my hands dirty. Mm. So when I started getting in trouble growing up, that started affecting my relationship with my family. I was the baby. I was, like, you know, I'm the oldest out of all my siblings. But, like, in the general scheme of things, like, I'm one of the youngest grandchildren and I'm one of the youngest nephews. So even though I got younger brothers and shit like that, I... I still have mad family that's older than me. So I'm mm. one of the favorites. You know, I was born in 98 when I have cousins that are 30-something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, now I'm one of the older uncles laid back. You know what I'm saying? Like, Who's but, but I remember being the baby. I remember being, you know, babied a lot and protected a lot. And, you know, eventually I started realizing that... You need I, to be independent. As I started getting into trouble... You gotta my, pay the you gotta pay the consequences. My, and my peoples didn't prepare me mm -hmm. with the proper tools to maneuver. I was naive. I had a very good heart, so I started to become a product of all of the negativity. Mm -hmm. um, I started to realize that like my pops didn't necessarily teach me how to handle certain situations, so I had to handle them myself, and that put a chip on my shoulder. He's non-confrontational. But he's still an authoritative Caribbean parent, so he mm. might bring the smoke to me. But if a nigga take his parking space in the parking lot, uh, he might just be passive about this shit. Or he might just, like, let the shit slide. Mm. So eventually, I saw contradiction in that. I was like, you gotta have the same energy everywhere. All the time. Mm -hmm. Or else niggas are just not gonna respect you, period. So I started handling my affairs, like, a little more gangster-like, I guess. And, and it's funny, because you notice people gave you more respect. Um, but a lot of people also recognized that my folks was good folks. And I wasn't the nigga who grew up without a father for me to be acting like that. Exactly. Sometimes you know that's saying? the lesson you have to learn. So I had to G-check myself and be like, yo, don't go crash out. Self-evaluation. Don't move trying to get your lick back all the time. You get what I'm trying to say? Because some, some shit's just going to happen to you and you're going to have to... See that girl again or see them niggas again and and you just gonna have to either keep it pushing or if you wanna cling to the past, then proceed if the get back's worth it. You know what I'm trying to say? So how does your how does your personal life and your creative process interfere? Like when does your personal life and music and art interfere for you? I've been rapping for so long I should have an extensive catalog, don't you think? I only have my LP from 2018 that I started working on in 2016, my senior year. Because my senior year, I opened up for Joyner Lucas in Roxbury right here. Like, you know, Roxbury was the first uh, wow. was the first neighborhood of Boston to really, like, embrace me like that. So, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, rest in peace, have a replay, you know, and, and uh, I just want to take the time to say, like, make the most of, you know, what you're doing with, with, with your grains of sand and... Uh, you know, hustle and motivate too. You know what I'm saying? Like, by any means. Um, I would say in 2018, I lost my auntie. And I put out my LP later that year. But you could tell that, like, 
putting out that LP and later that year losing my aunt, that slowed my motion almost entirely. all the way. All the way. Because I stopped putting out music, I cleared my discography. I was lost in a cycle of grief because she wanted to see me in school and I was in the streets. So the guilt that came with her not seeing me winning when she left this earth, that shit was unbearable. You know what I'm saying? And it's like two days after I shot Gata, I lost my uncle. You know what I'm saying? My uncle T. What a and, story. Um, that I, I, I turned 24 two days after I shot Gata. So I turned 24, saw my uncle for the last time. He went to New York on a trip. And later on that week, I, I heard he got in, into an accident, slipped down a flight of stairs, cracked his skull. He spent a week in a coma, and then he he died of uh, bleeding in the brain. R.I.P. So, you know what I'm saying? And that, that made me snap out of it, though. That made you realize, don't take this, this shit for granted. This shit is still going to keep on happening. You're going to lose people, and you're going to keep on accumulating regrets, and you're going to keep on accumulating sorrows, and you're going to keep on living life pissed off, missing the whole meaning of this shit. Like, you only get one of these. You don't get another one, so don't spend that shit pissed off. Be happy. Smile even if your shit, you know, crooked or you got a gap. You know what I'm saying? Like, take your chances. Don't be passive. Don't let life just pass you by. Don't be a nigga who got nothing to show for how long he's been here. You know? Mm. My father's a great man, but I spent a lot of time criticizing because he, he, he boasts hard work. And living here in America, I've come to realize that hard work is like the brag of an idiot if you don't have anything to show for it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And... You know, no disrespect to my own family. Like, I love the values they instill within me because I'm not better in jail thanks to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, my grandmother's a Christian woman. As somebody who identifies as Haitian, but my grandmother has light skin, blue eyes, and very, in like, Native American hair. You know what I'm saying? She's, like, on your more, like, lighter skin. Like, she look more Puerto Rican than Dominican almost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, my grandmother having her beliefs on religion and stuff and me having my relief my beliefs because i believe in spirits you know what i'm saying I believe, most you know, I, I i i work you know I, i'm not gonna say i practice voodoo but i identify more with the structure and the story behind voodoo because i know my you know i know my island's real uh history so i know voodoo isn't exactly what western civilization and hollywood has portrayed it to be also I think you said I think you said a lot of important things. I want to bring it back to, um, I want to bring it back to this art because I think it's just so important to mention some things. And being an artist, you can speak from a knowledgeable perspective. So, what, what would you tell somebody who's looking to start their careers and get to where you're at in terms of being able to drop music, being prepared, um, learning the ins and outs of the music game? Just what's what's just some what was some what's some simple advice if you could break it down into simple terms as if you were talking to a five year old but these aren't five year olds just in simple terms to people watching this thinking damn okay. valid 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 told me something I can relate to that it doesn't matter if the people around you tell you they're the best people around you for you or whatever like it doesn't matter um, the moment you recognize conflict. Or the moment you see that somebody's words ain't matching up with their actions and they trying to still, uh, you know, lead by example at the same time, that's a red flag. So, it, even if... In you terms know, of the music and the art. No, no, no. In terms of life, like, if you're growing up in a household and you think the discipline of your household is detrimental to you, then pick up a different discipline. Even if you have to find that shit in the streets. You know what I'm trying to say? But always have a middle ground. Because in my family, mental health wasn't exactly prioritized on. So, like, my first rule of business, I would say to anybody who's trying to do this music shit and shit like that, get yourself a motherfucking therapist and don't crash out. Like, don't go, you know, uh, uh, picking fights and losing your life out here in the street mm. over some shit that you probably could have just addressed by having some self-control and some discipline, you know what I'm saying? Because I've lived many years fueled by that. I know what it's like to be in that state where you, you could lose everything over just, like, some small Something shit. so little. You know what I'm saying? And, like, so get yourself some good mental health. Even if y'all find that in church, if you're Christian, you know, like, I don't want to offend you if you're Jewish, you know, if you're, you know, whatever. Just make sure that you're taking care of your spirit, taking care of your 
because that's going to help you obtain discipline and routine and organization for you to actually meet your deadlines, um, execute, and not be scared to execute. Because when my auntie died, it didn't matter how good I was at rapping anymore. You're not releasing it. I wasn't releasing it. And when my uncle passed away, I was in the middle of shooting a video because I was finally ready to get my motion going. And that was a test for me to see if I was still going to carry through with everything. And I still dropped out of you know, mm. you know what I'm saying. And like now, you I giving know. yo, you giving some real game out. You like you talking about how to how to how to how to believe in yourself and face adversity yo, is what like, I've been hearing. I've been calling myself Nico Valid for a decade. If I didn't believe in myself, then what the fuck would be valid about that? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck would I be if not me? You know what I'm trying to say? Like valid used to be an acronym, Nico Valid. Vouch, advocate, live. And love, interchangeably, because the L could have been live or love. Um, vouch, advocate, live your individuality or die. Because if you're not valid, if you're not vouching and advocating to be yourself and you're trying to be somebody else, then, like, there's no point. Like, your existence was meant to be your existence. There's already somebody who's Jay-Z. There's already somebody who's Drake. There's already, like, you know what I'm saying? You can- That's how you explain what a fucking artist name means, man. Like, yeah, cause now- I got aliens, you know what I'm saying? Like, I go by St. Nico the Sinner, Cinnamon, St. Sin. Yeah, my name you Nicholas. got them all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My name Nicholas, and my birthday June 30th. Yeah. If you didn't know, Christmas Day is my half birthday. Mm-hmm. So all y'all who don't celebrate half birthdays, Y'all celebrate mine every year. Y'all don't even know it because I'm St. Nicholas. That's my patron saint. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not a saint, you know, nor do I try to be or nothing like that. I'm real. I go by St. Sinner, like, because I was born in the flip side of Christmas. I was born in the summer when shit hot. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm Caribbean, like, so the whole, like, St. Nico, if y'all ever see, like, me going by my aliases and switching, like, Wayne had. Tunchi, Weezy, Weezy. Yeah, Day. that's interchangeable. Like, so that's interchangeable. Let so. let me ask you, what do you see yourself like? What do you see yourself becoming in the next five years? And along with that question, I want to say, when 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 you have this, when you're gonna share your idea of who you, who you think you're becoming in the next five years, I also want you to put in some thought about where you think the New England rap scene, the hip hop scene, the art. Where is that going to be? We're going to be in the industry. And I want you to just expand on both of those things. So because my hesitation, um, dealing with my life's adversity, and me being unable to hit life harder than it was hitting me for so many years, I let the New England scene potentially slip out of my grasp and my control, honestly, because I was rapping when nobody was rapping. So you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there was older heads. But even their motion, you know, uh, 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 was kind of slowed. And seeing me being a fresh young kid in the city rapping again kind of re- reinvigorated a lot of the older cats to start making music again, too. So I feel like I just served my community. Like You served your purpose. I served my purpose, you know what I'm saying? There was times where I felt like, damn, I don't need to, need to rap anymore because all these niggas is rapping. And I wasn't good at nothing else. So seeing niggas all of a sudden, like, mm. rapping and shit. I was like, oh, that's dope. I'm not alone anymore. Little did you know it was your effect. It was my effect. Yes, because you were reinvigorating them. You were showing them, hey, listen, belief isn't dead. Because here you are. You won a Grammy. Yeah. And and I was like, yo, this is amazing. But at the same time, like, nigga, this could have been you because you were rapping for so long and you also a young kid. You're just not using your fucking head and believing in yourself as much as you claim to be. Mm. So that's when I had to really tap in and what it means to be Nico Valid as my stage name. You got what I'm saying? You became Nico Valid, for real, for real. Yeah, like now, like I made a promise to myself and to my fans and everybody who's ever been like DMing me, supporting me, pushing me to drop music despite seeing what I was facing. Because anybody who know me know that I was still in the studio, I was still doing everything, um, but I just wasn't releasing so shout out everybody who really like was pushing me, was and snapping and impulsing me to snap out of that. They was bringing in the loan. Because I was doing a mental bit, man. I was sitting in prison inside of my own mind. And I've seen niggas actually go to prison and come back to make music. You know? Like not to speak on anybody's individual case, but I got love for niggas 
who who around me who who were facing lifetime charges and and are out on fucking bond and bail and they still putting out music videos they still putting on and representing that that to me because I haven't gone through none of that that's the inspiration that's the inspiration like, you know what I'm saying? There's a beauty to watching niggas face their adversity gracefully. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, and the New England uh, rap scene, what about that? Man, I want to do something about that because I feel like as a kid who was juggling so many different sounds, J. Cole was my favorite rapper at some point, Jay-Z, Drake, Tory Lanez. Like, there was just, like, mad people who I was just, like, such a fan of, Young Thug, Future, you know? Um, and then I'm watching, like, the people who find their cadences from that, like, later on, like, Lil Baby and, like, Gunna. I told myself, yo, New England needs a sound, but niggas is trying it can't to... can't be biting anybody. It can't be biting anybody. And a lot of things that New England's doing right now is either Chicago drill-inspired or New York drill-inspired. And the only thing is resulting in is... More violence. The same shit that's going on out there. And, and and so people so what you're saying is people are trying to find a market for music in New England, but by trying to replicate what the other states have been able to do with when they have huge impacts in huge regions, is bring the same kind of negative energy and connotation. But in as a result of that, they will they will acquire the clout, the popularity, the respect of those other places like the South, the West Coast, yeah. and New York when it comes to the music scene. So it's like, the sacrifice is this. Which hill do we choose to die on? Is it the one that is a market for death and violence and aggression and ignorant shit? Or is it original, pure, and naturally occurred? I'll, I'll tell you this. That, that's young the one thug, that takes the time. Young Thug, being from Atlanta, I feel like Atlanta got the most freedom in music right now. Like, I love Atlanta and I love Florida. So like, I'm not familiar with the answer to like to what um, New England rap scene gonna be like. No, no, I'm definitely the nigga with the answer to that. Okay. <laughs> but, but I'm not the nigga with the answer to like which hill any other any particular nigga should die on, right? All I'm saying is because my music isn't non peaceful protest music either. I'm talking like aggressive shit because it's an expression of my emotions too. It's an expression of some of the shit I've witnessed and seen too. I'm a product of the same trauma as the people who I'm sitting here judging for for having. I just have more awareness of the issue. You get what I'm trying to say? A lot of these people fall in line with the agenda. A lot of these people, you know, it goes over their head what they're what they're feeding into. You know what I'm saying? What's the like? Same thing with the whole Dominicans and Haitian thing. I encourage my souls and I encourage, you know, Dominicans to actually really... And I mean my dark-skinned Dominicans because there's light-skinned Dominicans who ain't even black, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I encourage my peoples to really, like, have awareness of self and, and, and why things... Why you why you walking on the earth that you're walking on right now? Why you walk... Like, you know, what did your family do to get here? What did the government do to your family? To, to have you here. You know, as black people, we gotta ask ourselves that, not just as, you know, Latin American or Afro-Caribbean, like, just, like, in general, you know what I'm saying? That's ask a fact. Yourself. That's a fact. And I wanna say, yo, Nico, you came in here, you did your thing. Thank you so much for putting in your time with Putting Work TV. I wanna say it was a great interview. Absolutely. You answered every question fully. You went in depth. Um, if there's anything you want to say, talk your shit to the people, just give them a quick one-two punch. And thank you for your time here. You put in work sure. for real. I just want to, you know, express to my friends, my family, my fans, everybody, um, that from this moment onward, I'm definitely going to be more open with y'all about my artist growth. And, like, you know, like, y'all might not know every bit in detail of what I'm going through, but I'm going to let the music really do the talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, for we're sure. going to see consistency in motion. So that's what, we, that's what we're about, baby. You know what I'm saying? So thank you to everybody that's been, you know, just showing that love and that motivation. I, I, I plan on returning that tenfold, for real. Couldn't have said any better, man. Thank you.